struggling with food insecurity was in plain sight. Families in need become more vulnerable than ever. The needs continue to increase. This virus will expose America's food insecurity problem. Student Food Rescue is a community service center program. We've actually been here since around 1988. We kind of tackle both the issues of food waste and food insecurity in Boston. Food insecurity isn't gonna end once COVID ends. It's been something that our country has been dealing with for so long. We have such a surplus of food all the time and we always have, but the big issue is really just getting the food to those who need it. We take up food from a donation site, places like Whole Foods or like Iggy's Bread. Picking up leftover or like imperfect food items that either can't be sold or we're just like overstocked. And then we donated to various different community partners in the greater Boston area. So it ranges from places like transitional homes to homeless shelters to just, you know, low income housing units and senior centers. So today it looks like we've got a nice selection of some fruits, lots of bread, some non-perishable items. And then on the days we get lucky, we get some items that are refrigerated but haven't even expired yet and can still be eaten at the pantry today. Everyone should be able to access the same amount of nourishing, healthy, good food. And that's a huge issue in this country and a huge issue within this city. In Boston specifically, the food insecurity rate before COVID was said to be 13% which is around 415,000 people. But that number can get much higher when we're looking at specific neighborhoods within Boston. Oftentimes neighborhoods that are literally right next to each other experience very different food insecurity rates. For example, Roxbury and West Roxbury. Roxbury, I think, experiences one of the highest rates of food insecurity, whereas West Roxbury has the lowest rate of food insecurity in the Boston area. In wealthier, wider areas of the city, it's a lot easier to come by grocery stores than in lower income communities, communities of color, communities with large immigrant populations. Some other ways that food injustice occurs is through things like access with transportation, distance to the grocery store, economics. So it could be because fresh produce is too expensive at your local stores. The reality is we produce enough food to make high quality food accessible and affordable to everyone. 40% of the U.S. food supply is wasted every year. That's roughly 80 billion pounds. Food waste happens at every single level. So say we're thinking of like produce, if it doesn't look a certain way or if it doesn't like feel a certain way, like it's thrown out immediately. Grocery stores have their sell-by date, which is important to note that a sell-by date isn't an expiration date. So all of this great food gets thrown out. Once you read the facts about food waste and just how much food we're wasting, then that can directly impact food insecurity. Today, we're gonna to be going on one of our food routes. We go on every Saturday, and we're gonna be going to Cambridge. We're gonna to go to two different Whole Foods, and then we're gonna drop off all the donated food that we can and give it to the Brookline Food Pantry. I guess something we hope that people get out of this program is that there are actionable steps that they can take to reduce food insecurity in their neighborhoods. You know, as like college students, because of our like transient nature, I guess, you know, we're only here for four years. We just kind of come to the city, take what we need from it and then leave. Since there's like a lot of college campuses in Boston, it gentrifies the area. And so it's important to give back to the community that I live around. Something that's really cool, that's a really easy step that college students can take is that around the Boston area, there are these things called community fridges that are popping up. And they're literally just a fridge on the street where you can put any rescue food in it and anybody can take it, like no questions asked. Mutual aid work isn't gonna solve every single issue or even eliminate these issues that we're trying to deal with, but I think it brings us one step closer and hopefully through this type of work, we find inspiration to advocate for more systemic changes. We should really be out there every day trying to do what we can.